In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, welcome to worship. It is good for us to gather today on the Lord's Day to proclaim the hope that we have in our God to save, to gather, and to call and equip all God's people. And so we say with confidence that our help is in the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Amen. Let us call one another to worship using Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still water to restore my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk to the darkness valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. You rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another.
Let the congregation, let us all together hear the word of the Lord from the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock, have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not always been good witness to your truth, nor accurate signposts point to your grace. Our words have heard, and our action has been callous. Forgive us. Restore us. Help us to be a people to point the true shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. If we say we are without sin, We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, he who is faithful and just will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen.
All right, at this time, I would love to welcome all the kids to come on up and join me at the steps. Come on up, have a seat. Come on up and have a seat. You're like really far away. Like everybody's here and you're over here. Like, come in a little bit. What's up, Gabriel? How are you? Nice shoes, man. I like those. I've been looking. I like that nice green. The green stole. Yeah. Isn't this neat? Green is your favorite color. Awesome. 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 It's a robe. And I wear, this is like the thing that I wear. Yes, I have a shirt. I mean, you have a shirt. I got a shirt. Yeah. I mean, that would be an awkward conversation. So we're not going to go any further on that one. Yeah. Would that would be, we're not going to, yeah, that would not be cool. So anyway, let's not talk about that anymore. Um, friends, I'm so glad that you're up here today. All of the scripture passages that we have talk about sheep and shepherds. And can I confess something to you today? I was going to like draw a picture of a sheep or a sheep. Yeah, no, that's singular. So, sorry. Weird. All right. So I was going to draw a picture one, but I am terrible. I'm terrible at drawing sheep. So for those of you, so, but that's okay. Though for, for those of you that are going to like are interested in coming to the art table, I need your help. Based on what we hear in the passages, what we've heard so far, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, right? And then, or woe to you shepherds of my sheep. And then we're going to hear two more passages that talk about sheep and shepherds. Could you draw me some sheep and shepherds today? If you want, you don't have to, but if you would, I would be so grateful because I would like to put up a bunch of pictures in my office of sheep and shepherds because that's how the Bible kind of talks about us. And that's what we're going to learn today is that we are sheep, but then we're also called and invited sometimes to be shepherds and people that take care of sheep. And so I thought, I need your help. If you want, if you would like to, I would really love to have your artistic talents today. Help me draw some sheep and shepherds. You can do that at the art table. You can do that back, back at your seat. Whatever, uh, whenever you could do that, that would be awesome. Can you help me with that this morning? And then we're going we're gonna to talk more about it. You can listen to the sermon if you're at the art table or your seat, and we can talk more about that, okay? Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, today um, I, we are going to pray for our time, and then we will dismiss you to the art table or to your class, okay? All right. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for loving us. Thank you be, for being the good shepherd that leads us into the right places to go. And we ask, oh God, that just as you have called us your children, the sheep of your pasture, that you continue to watch over us and care for us, whatever we do. And we ask that you continue to help us show your love to everyone we meet. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. All the kids up to and including or up to and through second grade can go with Miss Beverly to children in worship. And then the rest of you can go to the art table or to your seats. Thanks for coming up. Let us pray. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Jesus, you are the light of the world and you call us to walk with you and to walk in your light. Shine through the words today and through the preacher. And Holy Spirit, would you shed the light of Christ on all that is in us and all that you would have us see around us. To love in your name, to serve in your ways, and to become more like you in every way. Amen. Friends, this morning, our uh, 
our text is from both the Gospel of Mark chapter 6 and from Paul's letter uh, to the church in Ephesus chapter 2. Hear these words first from the Gospel of Mark. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As soon as he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they had heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplace and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. This is the gospel of our Lord. And from Ephesians chapter 2. So then, remember that at one time you were Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who were called the circumcision, a circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at one time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us abolishing the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access to one spirit to the Father, So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you were also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord. Third Reformed Church, sometimes we are shepherds, and sometimes we are sheep. Sometimes we are shepherds, and sometimes we are sheep. And sometimes we can be surprised by which one we are, and sometimes it isn't, it isn't all that obvious to us which ones we might, which one of those we might inhabit. That is until the moment unfolds. To help me explain what I mean, I'm going to need you to come with me to Mason City, Iowa. We will travel I-80 West and up to uh, Highway 35, north of Des Moines by two hours, and we will plant ourselves in this little town. It's there that I had my first call out of seminary. I had only been there a few months, and I needed to go see a parishioner in the hospital. His name was Harold. Harold was a retired RCA minister. At a time he graduated seminary, there was way more uh, pastors than there were churches. So the RCA had asked some to retire and find different work. And they did. Harold found his work in a tool and die factory. And he loved his work. He brought it home and even had a little shop in the basement that he continued to fabricate uh, pieces for various projects when asked. 
Harold had a quiet wisdom accompanied by an ever-present kindness. And even though he wasn't serving as a pastor, pastor, nor did I have seen him operate in that office, he still held on to his keen pastoral instincts. He used to tell everyone in the room as he was coming or going, the Lord bless you. And I went, oh, that's so cool. He sounds so wise and awesome. I'm going to steal that. Fast forward a couple months later when I had to have minor surgery done and I was leaving the hospital and I said to the nurse, the Lord bless you, to which she chuckled a thank you. I felt strange, shut my door and looked over to the driver's seat to see my wife, Megan, looking at me with an amused smile on her face. The Lord bless you. I said, yeah, I heard Harold say it. You're not Harold. (laughs) It was true. I was not an 80-year-old retired pastor who seemed to have utilized the lifetime of being both a pastor and, and, and faithful servant in the church he attended in Mason City, Iowa, to muster up the gravitas to give a Lord bless you. So it was this herald that I went to see, pulled into that familiar Uh, parking lot to the hospital. I had been there often already in my first few weeks, but that didn't make it any less difficult. I was a bit intimidated to go see Harold, to go minister to a former pastor. I know he was a parishioner, but I felt suddenly inadequate. This feeling grew as I made my way down the hallway and into Harold's room The sun was shining unbelievably bright onto the bed in which Harold was laying, and he was there with a huge smile on his face as the sun just shone upon him. And I was like, great, here's the guy that looks holy basking in the sun, and I'm walking in, 20-something pastor. I know he wasn't it, it wasn't a life or death situation. He was just recovering from minor surgery, but I, I still wasn't sure how to inhabit the moment I had planned my visit ahead, kind of reciting maybe some of the questions I was going to say. I was very, feeling very nervous. So I tried to muster up some kind of question about his recovery. Not too comforting, because I didn't want him to think that I was alarmed. I knew it was minor surgery, right? Like, so not too comforting, but comforting enough. How do you begin to say something like that? And it kind of came out as a jumbled mess of a question. I tried to recover, asked if we could read some scripture and pray, which of course he agreed to, smile never leaving his face. It settled me down a bit. And uh, it settled me down a bit after we read the scripture and we began to talk about that scripture. Then Harold took the conversation into a different direction And he began to ask me about ministry, how it was going. How was I transitioning to a new place? What did I think of this state known as Iowa? And what did I think of how different it was from maybe just the place that I had come from? He began to encourage me, thanking me for the few sermons he's heard me give already and how that I took time out of uh, my schedule to come and see him and pray with him and offered Uh, such encouragement, and I went, who exactly is ministering to who here? See, I went there to minister to Harold. I was his shepherd. Harold was one of the few that still understood the term domini. I left realizing that I was the sheep that day. I was confused and overwhelmed at the weight of my calling, feeling wholly inadequate to even open the word of God and pray. I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. But Harold shepherded me through that. As we look at our texts for today, all of them from the very first call to worship, which maybe at the time didn't quite feel like a call to worship. Let's get ready to worship God. He leads me by quiet waters. And still, like it's Maybe didn't quite feel that way. What are we ascribing praise to God? It, it feels more like we're just acknowledging God as shepherd. 
order, a call to confession that basically called leaders of the church out, leaders of Israel out for being uh, derelict in their duty as shepherds of the people of God. Well, whatever it is, including our gospel text for today, or as we will see also our New Testament text, <clears throat> there is a theme about sheep and shepherd dealing with the needy and the neglected. In our texts for today, we, in our gospel text for today, we see Jesus in the midst of quite a busy season. We can feel it. The pace of the text quickens almost sentence by sentence. Come away, Jesus says to his disciples, from a, uh, uh, to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Why? Well, we might remember that the disciples had just come back from being sent out by Jesus, two by two to various villages to proclaim the kingdom of God, to heal the sick, and to have authority over spirits that were unclean and would weigh people down. They have come back with stories telling of the work that God had done in and through them. But they had found that the more work they did, the busier they got. The more people started showing up, the more need they found, the more neglected were coming out of the corners of a society that had ignored them too long. And so Jesus says, come away. And they try. And the people run ahead of them, come out from the villages People are laid in the cities, in the, in the public places, for the disciples, for Jesus to walk by, for them to be noticed, for them to be, to be led, to be healed, to be cleansed. We're told in verse 34 that Jesus sees all of these crowds of people along with his disciples. They are tired. They are worn out. They haven't even had time to eat. But Jesus sees them at once. And it's described that they are a great crowd. And he has compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach he began to lead. The compassion that Jesus has for the needy and neglected seems to have no end. It just continues and continues. Sometimes we are the sheep. And maybe we can resonate with the feeling of those crowds running on ahead, not wanting Jesus to leave our sight lines looking out into the water to make sure that we still have uh, uh, our eyes on his boat, waiting for him to pull into shore again. We're not ready for Jesus to leave. We're not ready for Jesus to, to go away. There's more that we need to know. Does Jesus understand how needy we feel, how much help that we actually need? Sometimes we feel like the sheep, in need, unmoored, adrift. Sometimes we feel like the sheep, inadequate, helpless, needy, and neglected. Our, t our gospel text for today reminds us that Jesus has compassion on the sheep needy and neglected, in need of help, in need of restoration and healing, in need of compassion and understanding. These are parts of the human condition. A condition, mind you, that doesn't mean failure. It doesn't mean uh, that you have lost your way as fault of your own. This isn't about your blame. It just means that you're needy. It means that you lack and you recognize that lack. Who of us doesn't lack? Which of us doesn't need help? Our text for today reminds us that sometimes we're sheep, and we need the word, the teaching, the healing, the hopefulness of the Good Shepherd. And sometimes 
we are told that we are shepherds. The Jeremiah text was quick in its indictment, was it not, where we picked it up? Woe to you that shepherd the people of Israel and lead them astray. Now, special note should always be made for the leaders, the teachers, the <laughs> preachers, maybe, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> Sometimes a passage like this gets read to leaders, and it should. Those that seek to help lead God's people, the elders, the deacons, the pastors in our polity, those that work together to make up the leadership body of a local congregation. Yeah. Are we leading in the right way? Are we shepherding appropriately? That is definitely part of the Jeremiah text. But it's also true as we read that in light of our Ephesians text that, it's, that it isn't just for leadership, but it's for all of us. Congratulations, church gathered here at Third Reformed. Congratulations, you are part of the priesthood of all believers. It isn't just me. <laughs> it's all of you too. You are just as guilty. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> it's all of us. I may be called to minister the office of minister in word and sacrament, and you might be called into a different office in the church. You might have different gifts and different resources. You may be able to do sheep. Your sheep are looking great, by the way. I like those. You, might, you may be able to do that. I can't do that. But together, we make the priesthood of all believers. We have been given this task to shepherd the world well. And to point to the love of the good shepherd, the only true shepherd, mind you. But we are also called to and equipped to shepherd the world towards the love of God. And here we get the Ephesians text. Because Paul is writing to a group of people, some of whom are needy and neglected some of whom have been far off. See, in Ephesians, there was this thing that continued to happen in the church, the church gathered in Ephesus. There were those that were Gentiles, that means non-Jewish, non-Israel people, people of God people, as it was thought in the Old Testament, and the Jewish people who had come to be followers of Jesus. And there was this thing called circumcision. It was a mark for the males to be known on their bodies as people who belong to the living God. And so when people, Greeks, people in Asia Minor, started to also follow this Jesus, there was this wondering, do they have to be circumcised too? Do they have to be marked in their body in the same way that we were? And they would call those Gentiles the uncircumcision. And Paul writes and says, that sounds like a dividing wall that needs to be, tear, that needs to be torn down. Something that separates the Gentiles from the Jews, a ways to say, we're better than you. And Paul uses this image that is in the temple a temple image, it was a wall, a half wall called the Sorek. It existed in the temple and there was a sign on the temple wall that said, if you are a Gentile and you go past this point, you will die. That's what the sign said, more or less, paraphrasing, but that's what it said. Um, you may not go past this point. Past this point, we're only for the people of Israel and past another gate, yet we're only for the men of Israel and past that point, we're only for the priests of Israel. There was this, this class system within the temple structure in its very architecture, in its uh, stone was laid upon stone. There was, there was a way to divide people and Paul comes in and says, that wall has been torn down in Christ Jesus. And now, this Jesus, the good shepherd, has become our peace. Those of you sheep who are very far off, and those of you sheep who are right near. We're all the same sheep, all in need of the same shepherd. So as we shepherd accordingly, we must remember 
that it is also our job to make sure that no barriers exist between those who long to hear the word of God, long to accept the word of God and its truth and God. It is our job to make sure that the dividing walls have been torn down. If we want to be shepherds of God in Christ Jesus, it, we become by our very nature people that tear down the wall. That's our job description. So then, Jesus said, or Paul says, um, that there are no longer strangers and aliens, but only fellow citizens with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. And I want to make this point abundantly clear. Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. And it is our job as shepherds to point only to Jesus. And it is our job as sheep to only hear the call of the good shepherd. Third Reformed Church, sometimes we're sheep and sometimes we're shepherds. We can be the needy and the neglected and those who lack. When we are the needy, when we feel neglected, when we are the sheep who feel lost and adequate, where do we seek out our help? Do we have our eyes affixed like those great crowds on the shore as they were running along, making sure they didn't lose the sight of Jesus? Are we keeping our eyes solely affixed on Jesus? Or in our world of self-help and uh, quick fixes, are we always looking for another solution? A, lo a solution we can swallow, a solution we can inject, a solution that we can cozy up to, a solution by proxy through others? Or do we have our eyes affixed on the one who will shepherd us into truth? All of us are like sheep from time to time, needy and neglected. That's not a failure. That's not a fault, it's just true. And when we find ourselves in those, place, in those places, are we finding our way back to Jesus? Sometimes we are shepherds. We are given this identity in Christ by the power of the Spirit to point to the love of God in Christ so are we doing the things that Jesus did? When we encounter the needy and the neglected, do we hold the same compassion that Jesus did as he saw the great crowds gather on the shore? Is compassion our first response when engaging with people, even if it's over and over and over again? Are we still able to muster up compassion even when it is frustrating? Are we removing the dividing walls between people that long to access Jesus and the love of God in Jesus? Are we knocking down walls of hostility, seeking understanding, representing the peace that Christ Jesus brings? Are we shepherding well and pointing people to the love of God in Christ? This week, as you think about it, here's what I would like us to try. Find a moment, find a time. It could be around a family meal. It could just be in the quiet that you create for yourselves as you go for a walk or sit at a table drinking a cup of coffee or tea before everyone else wakes up. Take a moment and think. Wonder out loud to yourself, when I am needy and neglected, when I am in need of help, where do I turn to first? Where do I run? Where do I fix my sight? And when I realize that I am also called into the priesthood of all believers, am I reacting with compassion on those I interact with? Am I encouraging like 
Harold in a hospital bed, even while he was recovering sutures in his side to a new pastor who needed a good word? Are we engaging in encouragement, compassion, and are we removing the dividing walls so that people can know and enter into a life in Christ Jesus? Think about that this week, Third Reformed. And know the call in which you have been given, we have been given, is to continue to testify to this Jesus who longs to draw the world together, those who are near, absolutely, but also those who are far off. May you know that your job is to help in bringing those in, testifying to the love of God and Christ, and to do so also understanding your and our brokenness as sheep in need of the love and support of the good shepherd to help us get through. And so we say, come Lord Jesus and heal your world. Let us pray. <clears throat> oh, good shepherd, we pray to you, giving thanks that we can point to you in a world that seems turbulent, in a world that longs for quick fixes of what ails us. Help us to sit with you. Help us to keep our eyes affixed on your son, Jesus. Oh God, help us to remember that to which you've called us, to testify to who you are and to point to your love. We pray all of this in the strong name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Third Reformed Church, I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we confess our faith together that we have been entrusted with. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he was rose again in accordance with the scriptures, and he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism, forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. It's good to be gathered together uh, in the house of the Lord. We welcome all of you for whom this is your church home. And we also especially want to welcome those of you who have joined us today for all kinds of reasons. Maybe you're in town. Maybe you have been looking for a place to worship with uh, brothers and sisters in the neighborhood. And we just want to extend our heartfelt welcome to you. We encourage you to ask your questions. And um, uh, we're so glad that you're with us. This morning, we have a few items uh, for our announcements. We hope that you'll also have a look at the bulletin and the newsletter and our website because there's lots of information about things going on at Third Reformed. Um, 
Today, following this service at 1130, we will have our Spanish service, El Encuentro. Um, Pastor Anja will be preaching, and there will be a luncheon to follow. So anyone and all are invited for that. There is English translation provided. In a moment, we are going to have a time of recognition, recognition and thanksgiving for one of our staff members, Kristen Beckner. And you're invited after this service and before the next uh, to ha- join us for a cookie reception in the foyer, in the gathering space. This week, there is a whole slate of special activities and service opportunities for our high school youth, and we will pray for them today for God to bless them and make them a blessing as they go about their week of local mission. And on Wednesday night, we'll have Summer Lift. That's a continuation, a picnic-y version of our year-long uh, Wednesday night meal and discipleship programming. If you've never come, come and join us. It's very casual. We'll eat outside. And this week's topic for the adults um, will be an opportunity to tour and learn about the recording studio and the opportunities for ministry that the recording studio that's being built in our basement uh, will provide. And there will be classes for the children as well and activities with volunteer leaders. On August 4, please make note of this, um, we will have one combined service at 10 o'clock. This is Sunday, August 4, one combined service with communion together, English and Spanish all together. And then following, we're gonna have a volunteer fair. We know that as you plan for your fall, you've been wondering and praying about what you'd like to do and get involved in at Third Reform Church. And this is going to be the open door you've been wanting to walk through. So please join us for a volunteer fair and for lunch uh, on August 4. Lunch will be provided, but there is an opportunity in the newsletter to sign up to bring a dessert, a handheld dessert item. So please look for that. And please bring a friend or a neighbor to join us for this great day. At this time, I'd like to invite Roger DeYoung and Kristen Beckner to come forward. You don't want to come up here? No. (laughs) She's shy. Do you ever wonder, like I do, how this old church functions so smoothly and efficiently day after day, week after week? Well, some of us may say it's because we have great preachers. And that's true, but they're usually busy preaching and praying and visiting the needy and the neglected. Others of us may say, well, no, it's because the consistory makes such wise decisions, but they only meet two hours once a month. I, of course, would suggest it's because our deacons know how to get things done, if we ever get around to them. (laughs) So how do our concerns get communicated and taken care of here at this place? Let's think about it. Who's the first person you see when you stop by the office? Who's the person that answers the phone when you have a question or responds to our emails when we can't get into the church directory? Who has the key for that locked room that we need to have a meeting in? And more importantly, who writes the checks and pays the bills to keep the lights on? And what about the bulletins? What would we do without them? Did they just show up on Sunday morning? Well, someone has to print them and neatly fold them. Well, that someone is Kristen Beckner, our office manager. And since the biggest portion of her job description is to keep all of us happy all the time, I will tell you that even once in a while, she will misspell things in a bulletin just so people who are looking for mistakes can find them and be happy. (laughs) She is the keeper of our information, the finder of all our answers. And today we recognize that she's been quietly, patiently doing this for 25 years. We need to thank her. She's with us here this morning although she usually worships with our Methodist neighbors because by Friday she can't think about driving into our parking lot one more time. (laughs) So Kristen, we thank you 
for being with us as our friend and our helper day after day for 25 years. This time, we invite the congregation to have a look at the fellowship pads and please sign in and let us know you've been with us. Um, and we invite you also to prepare to um, bring tithes and offerings that we receive shortly. Let us give thanks to God and bring our tithes and offerings.
Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Holy God, we bless your name. We give you honor and thanks and glory for who you are, for all of the ways that you have made us and sustained us, that you lead us, comfort us, prod us, and call us your very own. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we cannot imagine our lives outside of your shepherding. We give you thanks for all of the ways that you are at work among us as a church and as individuals. We thank you for this community. We thank you for those whose hours have bathed these walls, God. We thank you for the ways that many have grown up here. And we thank you for those who are newly joined with us, for those who have felt a stirring and have, are finding home here at Third Reformed. And we give you thanks and ask your help, God, to be a people, to be your sheep the way you have called us to be. And we know, God, how much we need your Holy Spirit for this to be so. We pray that you would make us more and more a congregation that remembers the needs of one another, that has eyes to see and a heart that resonates with all of the ways people are longing, hurting, wondering, dreaming, and calling on you, God. And we pray, God, that you would make us a congregation where none is overlooked or neglected and where all are welcome and at home here in your midst, God. We give you thanks for Kristen and all the ways that she helps this to be a part of our reality. We thank you for her years of service, for her gifts, and for her time and for her patient spirit. We thank you, God, for the way that you are raising up young people as new and emerging shepherds. We thank you, God, for the picture of older students shepherding, young, shepherding younger ones. We thank you for our, our high school students and the ways that you are preparing for them to serve here and around here in this week. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would lead them and shape them and show them more of yourself in these days. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit this is about the work of healing and comforting. And we pray for those in need in our congregation. We pray for Bia Rosaboom and Nancy Gebbin. We pray for the Haygood family and for Jackson and Tyler's grandfather. And we pray that in his time of difficult health that she would be with Amy and Jackson and Tyler as they traveled to visit him. We pray that she would grant him healing, that she would bless him in all of the ways that he looks to you. We pray for Beverly Ranell. We pray for all who are struggling with health and treatments, with uh, medical plans, with recovery and with therapy. We pray that you would hear the cry of every heart, that each one of us in our prayers would be heard by you and that Holy Spirit, you would minister in and among us. We pray for Bill Charlton and Lucille Schroeder, for Ellen Reek and Laverne Levency. We pray for those of our church family who are in the care of hospice, and we pray for you in this tender time in their life. We lift up Etta Hesselink and Tom Norman and Dennis Gebbin. We ask, God, that you would meet them where they are, but also, God, that you would walk with their family members and loved ones, that you would give them all that they need, and especially a measure of your peace and the assurance of your presence with them. We pray, God, for those that you have called out from among your church and that you are raising, um, through whom you are raising up new leaders in many places around your world. We lift up Lin Gan and Lubna Yunus. We pray that you would bless their ministries in the places that you have called them, that you would give them safety and protection and provision, and that you would make their light to shine brightly 
for the glory of Jesus' name. And as we think of all of these ways, all of these prayers that we lift up to you for healing and leading and guidance, God, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So third Reformed Church, may you go from this place and testify well to the love of God and Christ that you have experienced. May you go from this place recognizing your need for help is satisfied in Christ Jesus and in the people of God given in Christ Jesus. And may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and until we meet again. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.